First of all, you were at that 1922 committee meeting uh, last night. What did you make of what the Prime Minister said? Well, as ever, he was very, very enthusiastic. Uh, he's enthusiastic about the deal. And what was interesting was that the audience, the MPs, were enthusiastic about the deal as well. It was actually very well received. But I hate using cliches, but the cliche, of course, is the devil will be in the detail. And the meeting we had with the Prime Minister was at five o'clock. Then I had a meeting at uh, six o'clock with the ERG, of which I'm a member. There's about 100 members of the ERG. And uh, they're going to take their time, as will the DUP, in analysing all the ramifications of the deal, because it is a very, very complex deal. And uh, the uh, lawyers were saying it will take at least two weeks to come to, 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 come to a conclusion. That's a really interesting point, because, of course, we don't have a time frame on any sort of parliamentary vote. We've sort of had the deal uh, in the public domain for just under 48 hours. Uh, are you suggesting the ERG's own time frame there is probably two weeks before we will hear uh, a definitive conclusion? Well, Bill Cash chairs the committee of lawyers, and I specifically asked him how long it would take to come to a conclusion. And his answer to me was it would take two weeks. And I think that's now been broadly publicised in the press. So two weeks, at least, actually, is what he said. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope it won't take quite as long. Of course, we've had some very interesting reports in the newspapers today, in The Telegraph and The Times and others, looking at the EU statement about the agreement, comparing it with the British government statement. And I think that will focus minds. Will VAT be totally in the hands of the British government? Uh, will a state aid be again be totally in the hands of the British government? As far as Northern Ireland, these are issues which will have to be investigated. Certainly. Lots and lots of uh, detail to go through. I believe 16 individual documents published by the British government on Monday. Hundreds of pages. I've got them on the legal side of my text. desk. And, You've uh, got the command paper there in your hands. Uh, I have to say, Michael Fabricant, uh, have you read the command paper? And frankly, have, will your colleagues be reading every letter within that command paper? I've read some of it, but I've got constituency work to do as well. So I'm delegating it rather, as uh, I think many MPs will do, to the lawyers of the ERG and journalists like you, who will have a team of people going through it and analysing where there are differences, if there are differences, between what the Prime Minister has said and what the lawyers think will be the difference uh, with uh, what the actual uh, legal situation is. Now, of course, the big, big story that is dominating many headlines this morning are these, uh, these leaked WhatsApp messages from the former health secretary. I suppose there is, it's almost inevitable there will be questions on this in uh, Prime Minister's questions. Uh, Michael Fabricant, you were a big supporter of the government during that time, 2020, 2021. Uh, what's your takeaway from these, uh, these headlines and these messages this morning? Well, they certainly are headlines. I mean, it rather reminds me of when The Telegraph leaked all those years ago, the expense claims, which led to a huge scandal. I don't think, though, that this is quite like that. First of all, uh, some of the uh, WhatsApp messages are taken out of context. I mean, I used to WhatsApp, uh, 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 you know, the, the health secretary regarding these various matters as well during COVID and things that affected me, uh, that is to say, my constituency in Litchfield. And he was very, very good at responding. But the decisions, the decisions were not made by WhatsApp which is what Labour will be trying to portray. The decisions were made by Cabinet and by the committees, which are subject to Cabinet control. So, uh, you know, let's just wait and see precisely how this goes. I think what it does demonstrate is we need to get this national inquiry into COVID underway sooner rather than later. Otherwise, there's just going to be constant speculation. Of course, what I would say is I do think that... Uh, Hancock was rather naive to release all his messages uh, to a journalist. And in fact, we're being constantly told by the House of Commons authorities about uh, 
foreign actors in Russia, Iran, and elsewhere trying to hack into our mobile phones. So to actually give your mobile phone to a journalist who was known to be hostile to lockdown stri strikes me as being rather reckless. Do you think this might be something that the Information Commissioner uh, should uh, start to investigate, whether Matt Hancock's handling of his own personal, private, confidential data, data that might well have uh, national security implications, perhaps, was done in a proper way? Well, I think the Information Commissioner is already considering it, if I'm honest with you. I'll leave it to, uh, to him, or, or is it a her? I'm not sure who it is, to decide.